Uh, my name is Jeff Marietta. I'm the executive director here at Pine Mountain Settlement School. I just want to welcome everyone here. Um, this is so exciting, uh, not only for Pine Mountain, but for this region. Um, I've been talking about this conference for a long time to people, and everyone's very, very excited about you all being here. I hope you can feel that excitement um, in the people that you've met and the staff members. Um, so please uh, enjoy yourselves while you're here. Um, and if you have any questions, any issues at all, you can come talk to me or any one of the staff members. Um, I can't think of a more perfect uh, group of scientists, researchers, and practitioners to come to Pine Mountain Settlement School. Um, uses of and relationship with plants, cultures, and our environment. Plants and humane affairs. That's what Pine Mountain Settlement School is really about. It's about the use, the study, and the teaching of plants and how that fits in with humane affairs. And the word humane, it's not human, and I got this from your website. <laughs> humane, when you look it up, the, de the first definition is with compassion. And I think um, that for us is, is really at the heart of what we try to do here at Pine Mountain Settlement School. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I grew up in northern Minnesota in Hibbing, another mining town, uh, largest open pit iron ore mine in the world, and also the home to who we call Bobby Zimmerman, uh, Bob Dylan. Um, <laughs> met a wonderful uh, Kentucky girl, Kentucky woman. Um, <laughs> Sky Brosey, um, who's Sunshine's youngest sister, um, and Sky's mother taught here um, when it was a community school. Uh, she brought me out here. We were both teachers out in New Mexico um, on the Navajo Reservation. She said, I know where we're going to get married. She brought me out here about 12 years ago, um, fell in love with Pine Mountain Settlement School. We got married in the chapel. We celebrated our, our 10th anniversary actually last year. I told my wife, I'll bring you back to Pine Mountain for your 10th wedding anniversary. She did not know we'd be moving here. <laughs> and um, you'll see my kids around. My oldest is named Harlan. Um, we are in Harlan County. We did name him after this beautiful area as a, as a tribute. We did not know we would be moving here. Um, and my youngest, is his name's Perry, which happens to be in adjacent county. There's another story behind that, but I'll say that for later. Um, so we're, we're in an exciting time in Appalachia right now. Um, and it's exciting because right now there's unprecedented opportunity um, for new ideas, sustainable, diversified economy here in Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky and in Appalachia and the coal fields. At the same time, it's not exciting for a lot of people who've lost their lives. Um, and to talk about the distress and the excitement at the same time, it's hard to hold to what's, what are seemingly conflicting ideas in your head at the same time, but we have to do that in this region right now. Um, coal jobs fall to the lowest level in 118 years. This was May 2nd, 2016 in Kentucky. Since 1898, same number of coal, people employed in the coal industry since 1898, before the railroads came in. Now obviously mechanization and everything has changed, you can make that argument and everything, but there's, there's 6,500 jobs in the state of Kentucky in coal. That's not a lot of jobs, and it's not gonna go well. In 1898, the United States was fighting in the Spanish-American War and, and invading Guantanamo Bay. Um, coal in this area was being mined with mules. And it was at that time that Pine Mountain Settlement School Oh, I should uh, back up a little bit. Um, it was during that time that this area was going through incredible economic transition, much like we are today. Um, the difference being, obviously, that it was moving from more agrarian to manufacturing, railroad, mining, and logging. And it was in that context that these three amazing people came together and said, let's do something about educating the children here in the Kentucky mountains. We have William Creech. Um, you can probably tell which one is William. Um, a true mountain man, Civil War veteran, um, owned land tra and traded land, traded land to get this parcel that we're sitting on right now because he had a dream of a school for the mountain children. He tried to go 
everywhere he could to find people to make a school. And he ended up getting connected with a woman named Catherine Pettit, who was right there in the middle. Um, she had been one of the founders of Heinemann Settlement School. And this, these settlement schools were very much based off of the settlement houses in the urban areas in Chicago, in New York City, London, that was really trying to address this issue of the industrialization of America and how are we going to prepare our children, how are we going to make them and help them prepare for this transition in a sustainable way that makes them healthy, that helps them have better quality lives. Um, and then finally, Ethel DeLong, um, there on the right, these three people came together and they said, let's start a school for mountain children. Fortunately, um, Catherine and Ethel had great connections um, to some really amazingly talented people, one of which was one of the first female architects in the United States, Mary Rockwell Hook. Mary Rockwell Hook was born and raised in Kansas City, could not get into any architect schools in the United States because she was a woman, and went to Paris, was trained in Paris, had to learn French, came back, and almost every building you see here on campus was designed by her. It is a, almost a walking sort of portfolio, a living portfolio of her amazing work. Um, she very much, she was like green before green was cool. Um, she very much believed in using natural materials, in blending the buildings into the natural environment. Um, the chapel, the pitch of the roof is at the same angle as the north side here of Pine Mountain. These timbers were all locally uh, milled. And, and donated and volunteered labor from the local people here. Pine Mountain Settlement School operated as a boarding school from 1913 to 1949, and then as a community school from about 1950 to 1970. At that point in time, Harlan County basically create, built a brand new school that's about 11 miles down the road, um, and this school made a very brave and courageous decision and said, we're going to teach environmental education. 1972. Um, so at that point, Pine Mountain Settlement School, I'll use a word I hate, pivoted, um, <laughs> to an environmental education community center. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Setting the context, where we are right now, I feel like we're at deja vu all over again. Um, We've already gone through a significant economic transition. To say that we're going through an economic transition here in Eastern Kentucky is wrong. We've already gone through it. It's just the pain is so hard now, people are waking up and actually having to make a decision about what to do. Um, you can see this is urban, high density, rural, low density rural. Um, the shift in the economy from, away from agriculture, forestry, fishing, and manufacturing, you can see that the percent of employment in those areas, almost half, as it was um, in, 2000, in 1970. And obviously, this, this data, uh, these data are from 2007, so you know, I'm pretty sure these numbers are even worse than they are now. And where did all, that, where did all those jobs grow? Services, right? I mean, we, we know this story. Um, setting the context here, this data is from 2016. Annualized salary, and I was surprised, mining and logging, annualized salary for people in mining and logging, $74,000 a year. Professional services, lawyers, um, you know, people in, in financial services, things like that, $54,000. So we have, you know, the best, highest paying jobs are all basically leaving and going away. And those are being replaced and have been replaced, obviously, by these ones down here. <clears throat> Retail trade, fast food, Walmart, things like that, big box stores, and education and health services, nursing, teaching, things like that. Um, so it's sort of a, a double whammy. Not only are jobs going away, but the highest paying jobs that don't require a college degree are going away. And why is that so hard here in this area? Educational attainment. Educational attainment in this region is one of the worst in the United States. This is just metro and non-metro. So this is just basically rural and urban. And you can see there's a 13 point percentage gap 
between people who live in rural areas and people who live in urban areas who have a bachelor's degree or higher. So 17% generally of people in rural areas have a bachelor's degree or higher. That's half as it is in more urban areas. In Harlan County, it's even worse. Here, right here, you see the percentage of adults, 25 years and older, this is from 2013, who have less than a ninth grade education. 21 quarter of people, 25 years or older, in this county have less than a ninth grade education. And you can see that, where does that play out? It plays out all the way through um, going on uh, post-secondary. And it's really interesting, it really baffled me. The high school graduation rates in this area are actually on par on average with the United States when you look at the data. And I couldn't figure out how could that possible, how could that even be possible if a quarter of the people here don't have, uh, aren't making it to ninth grade? Well, it was actually garbage in, garbage out kind of data collection. The way they measure high school graduation, as many of you probably know, is entering ninth graders and exiting 12th graders. Well, not a lot of those kids actually make it to ninth grade. There's a huge dropout from eighth grade to ninth grade. So that's where that shows up, so that it, it, it's hidden. Um, it's not hidden here, but it's hidden in those high school graduation rates. The high school graduation rates of kids entering ninth grade and exiting is like 80%, 85%, so it's on US average. So what does that mean? And what does that, what does that mean for Pine Mountain? What does that mean for this region? What, what can we do about it? And I just want to throw this up as kind of a summary. Greater demand for skilled and specialized workers who need a bachelor's degree. Fewer low-skilled jobs for those folks. And that means that there's this big skills mismatch between the best, sustainable, diversified jobs that use your mind and don't destroy the environment and the people who actually live in those areas. So what we're, trying, what we're going to try to do um, is really hit on, on this equation right here. Our mission, and this is hot off the press, we just went through the strategic planning process, and that's why I got to look up here to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Should have this memorized, right? Enrich lives and connect people through Appalachian place-based education for all ages. Um, I think, feel like this conference is a big part of connecting, um, connecting you folks to this area, connecting you folks to the people here. Um, our work centers on four main areas, environmental education, community development, sustainability, and Appalachian culture and heritage. Now I'm just going to touch a little bit on our areas in there, and, and this is very much a work in progress. Um, we're, we're continuing to evolve to try to meet the needs of the community here and the future of Eastern Kentucky. Um, so environmental education, terrific program. Susan Brown is our program director. She's running the kids camp right now for today. If you haven't met her, talk to her. She drives all of our programming here at the Settlement School. Um, we have over 3,000 children that come here from all over the state and the country for day and overnight programming, um, mostly in the fall and the spring. We have forest ecology, stream ecology, Appalachian arts, a whole host of courses, over 25 different courses that students, can, that students and schools can choose from. Um, we also have professional learning experiences for teachers, so we run professional development for teachers that we're going to have one this summer um, in late July, basically how to use environmental place-based education in your own curriculum. Community development, we have day and overnight camps, and really this is just about responding to the community. And when I say community, oftentimes I'm referring to just the north side of Pine Mountain, these local little hamlets that you'll see that you drove through. We're, so, we're serving those people. And of course, they have many different types of needs. One is just education experiences, social experiences, connections to resources, um, honestly, dances, Friday night dinner, you know, good food, things like that. Um, and so we do a lot of that kind of work. Um, we also have a early childhood education program called Little School that we launched in January. Um, Pine Mountain, I should say, we relaunched 
Pine Mountain actually had an early childhood program in the 1950s and ran all the way through 1990. Um, it actually predated Head Start. And you'll see, go down to the, the little school room, you'll see it down there. Handmade furniture from the 1950s, kids play furniture, it's amazing. Um, and we, been, we ran that program, um, birth to five-year-olds and their parents. We provide free meal. Um, and exposing kids to print material, expo exposing kids and parents to literacy and reading. Um, sustainability, um, we run a very strong <coughs> community, excuse me, <coughs> community agriculture program through Grow Appalachia. Um, Preston Jones, is he here? He's back there. He's the coordinator of that program. We have 83 families that participate in that program, over 300 individuals. We teach them how to grow and market and can organic food. We give them free tools, free seeds, free technical expertise. We even go out and till their gardens. And you know what? They actually teach us a lot because they know a lot better how to garden than, than, <laughs> than some of us. And you'll see these amazing, amazing gardens as you drive around here. They are, they are absolutely incredible. I'd like to think we, have, we play a role in that. Um, but that's a big part. You see our high tunnels. We're really a demonstration experiment type to help people find markets and help them grow and, and connect with that. So we have forest medicinals. Obviously, some of you might have participated in that in the plant saver, ginseng, golden seal, um, things like that. Um, sorghum. We're growing sorghum. We have a sorghum festival that's going to be coming in September. Um, so I, I encourage you find Preston, talk with him. If, um, I think he's right up your alley. He'll have lots to talk to you about in that area. And then finally, we all do this in this place. Um, and it goes back to that humane part um, where we're carrying out this work in a way that honors and I would say promotes the strengths of Appalachian culture and heritage. Um, that includes running arts programs, it includes integrating local people in the work that we do, in the music that we have for you all, in the food that you eat. Um, and so that's a very sort of the core foundation of what we're doing. Obviously, you all know our campus, 800 acres, National Historic Landmark, Bitford State Nature Preserve, 23 buildings, many designed by Mary Rockwell Book. If you haven't had a chance, please go into our chapel. You'll get you'll be able to go into some of these other buildings um, throughout the week. So with that, I just want to welcome you. Welcome to, to this very special place that's near and dear to my heart. Um, thank you so much. And if you have any issues or any questions at all, please let me know. Thank you.